Wednesday, which apparently is for the Germanic god Woden. You know, you learn something new every day. I use these reminders of what day it is for hot news to remind me what day it is and subsequently forget it at every other opportunity. Yesterday was Thursday for me. And here we are just in an abyss of timelessness. Speaking of timelessness, we got timeless CPU stuff happening. Number one, Ryzen 3 3100, 3300X on sale tomorrow. Kind of exciting. Number two, i9 10, the 10 series from Intel, all of the reviews dropped as of 13 minutes ago. So you go check out reviews about that, but it's essentially what we covered yesterday. It's faster in gaming. It's hot and loud. Not as hot and loud as you would expect, but hot and loud. You want the best gaming chip? Get Intel. You want the best overall chip? Get AMD. Nothing's changed. Value? AMD. Best performance regardless of what your wallet thinks? Intel. Nothing is different. But everything may be different with this latest leak we've got about Vermeer, which is gonna be Zen 3, Ryzen 4000. We've got OPNs for an eight core 16 thread and a 16 core 32 thread AM4 desktop CPU. We could expect this would be either the 47 or 4800X and the 4950X coming out from AMD. With the listing of the OPN, it does seem like potentially we will get a release date maybe sometime in September is the general sentiment and there's also rumblings going on that we should potentially see a 20% IPC uplift to make it so that these would finally be better than the Intel gaming chips. Finally, AMD could just not have the equivalency of being like, you're, you're better at value and I should buy you, but 10900K. <laughs> That won't happen anymore if if all the leaks are true. We've also got some indication of clock speeds with the Vermeer chips. Number one, it does look like the base clocks are a little bit higher on the 16 core, but the boost clocks are a little bit lower than the 3950X. However, these are the A0 revisions, which could just mean that they're not going to be the final retail sample and we may end up seeing higher clock speeds. But if AMD ends up giving us the same clock speeds with the 20% IPC uplift, I mean, a 20% better processor is a freaking 20% better processor, no matter how you get it. They don't have to get to 5.3 gigahertz when they give you architectural changes, something that we have just forgotten about from Intel. We get no architectural changes. We get physical die changes of the, like, IHS gets thicker, and that's how they make it happen. AMD is just like, how about we engineer the CPU? Intel's like, how about we engineer the thing the CPU is on? New motherboard, anybody? New motherboard? Ayo. We'll talk about AMD's motherboard stuff in a little bit. Uh, on top of the 20% IPC uplift that's being rumored out there, it also has been heavily indicated that AMD is gonna be switching to eight core CCXs, so each chiplet will have eight cores. It won't necessarily give us an increase in the amount of cores or in the amount of threads. I've seen rumors of like four, core, four threads per core. Doubt that's gonna happen, hasn't been a lot of indication, but what, what happens when you get an eight core CCX is that you can unify the L3 cache, which should reduce latency and make gaming performance a little bit better. Vermeer might end up being way better of a gaming CPU, even if the IPC increases are 20%, we might see additional increases because of the unified L3 cache and other changes that AMD might make with the CPU. So. There's not a whole lot right now besides hopes and dreams of 20% better Vermeer CPUs. That's, I mean, September release date. We're getting awfully close to that. What I really want still is that 4700G. I want, if they release that with the B550, super excited. But let's talk about motherboards for a little bit. Number one, we had the whole controversy that AMD wasn't gonna support Zen 3 on B450 motherboards. And I talked about both in hot news on the video, but also our hot news live live streams, which you should totally check out at twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. We stream live there every day. We discuss this a little bit about the fact that if AMD doesn't directly support Zen 3 on B450, we would likely see motherboard manufacturers support it in a roundabout way, making it so that like, oh, hey, you get this BIOS update, which supports Zen 3, but it's gonna drop like the 2400G and the 2200G. Like you have to drop APU support and it'd be weird like BIOS update things and it'd be very complicated. Well, as of yesterday, which a lot of people have already made videos about, AMD 
has done this officially, Zen 3 will be supported on B450, but it's in an even more complicated fashion than I thought it could ever be. So there's a lot of caveats to how you're actually gonna be able to get B450 to support Zen 3. So it's kind of good that AMD listened to feedback and they're like, hmm, maybe we should support Zen 3 on B450, but I don't see the same righteous indignation going against the fact that B350 won't support Zen 3 because the whole justification from what I can see is that people are upset that the motherboards, the AIM4 motherboards don't support all the way through, but X370 and B350 won't support Zen 3, but there's no outcry about that. That also feels like AMD broke a promise there if the fourth generation will not support, be supported on the first gen motherboard. That was kind of the promise AMD gave us. In order to get to the fourth generation, you have to have a second generation motherboard. Sure, that might be the most common, B450 might be the most prolific, it just also like this feels like a stopgap measure against a promise and AMD still isn't completely in the right against what they're doing. That's my perspective on it. Uh, anyways, they came out with a list of a few different things about these motherboard updates in order to get Zen 3 to work on B450. Number one, it will happen, but it will not happen at launch. So if you want to get Zen 3, you're buying a Zen 3 chip and you have a B450, don't expect to get launch day support. Number two, it will disable support for many existing Ryzen desktop processors in order to make room for the ROM space. Number three, the select beta BIOSes will be a one-way upgrade path for the Ryzen, you will not be able to flash back to another BIOS. You will not be able to downgrade at all, which makes reselling a motherboard by itself a little weird. It makes it so that like testers and YouTubers will have to like have a Zen 3B450 and a non-Zen 3B450 to kind of check things out. And then number four, the one that I'm most concerned about is that they will only offer it if you're a verified customer of the Zen 3 processor, which how they're going to verify it, not very stipulated. If you could just input a serial code into their website and then you get the download, that would probably be the best way to do it. And I understand why they're doing it to make sure people aren't just downloading the latest beta BIOS and then bricking it for their CPU. You have to guarantee that you have a Zen 3 CPU. But if it's like, no, you actually need to show your invoice from Newegg that you bought this, don't like that. Then on top of that, AMD will not guarantee any support beyond Zen 3, which makes sense. They only guaranteed AM4 through the end of 2020. So we're at the end there. And then they're continuing to recommend that customers choose an AMD 500 series motherboard, which obviously B550 is coming out in June 16th. However, I do think a lot of this might be due to the fact that B550 has been extremely delayed. X570 came out in July. We've been on X570 for nearly a year by the time B550 came out. And from all of the indications that I originally got back at Computex last year, AMD was initially supposed to be launching these motherboards in the January to March timeframe. Well, now we're pushed towards the end of Q2 because of coronavirus and everything that's going on there. So the delay in B550 might be causing some of this headaches with everything going on there. But there are some opinions out on the internet that while this is a good move by AMD, I will say that this isn't a complete reversal of their stance. They're still not supporting B350 and X370, which is the same problem in my idea. Like it's the it's, it's the same broken promise. And then you also have Josh Walrus from PC Perspective saying unpopular opinion. I think going back and supporting Zen 3 on B450 X470 boards is a poor use of resources at AMD. Would rather focus on the 5600 series of boards with new chips without the extended AGISA issues we experienced with Zen 2. Might be a hot take, might not be. But there you go. You cannot flash back. Zen 3 will be supported on B450. How many of you are actually gonna upgrade to Zen 3 from your B450 motherboards? How many? I, I can't believe that it's gonna be a high percentage. I do think that the outrage is justified, but I feel like it's selective outrage. We're upset with AMD for breaking a promise, but only when it selectively applies to the few people who have hopeful wishes and dreams of upgrading not to the actual promise that they made, which was support through 2020. But where's the B350 outrage, people? Come on. Huh? Where?
get work sheep. Speaking of B motherboards, you like jazz? 55 AMD B550 chipset motherboard model names have been revealed. You can check it down below in the description so you can look at all of them. But from Asus to Biostar to Gigabyte to ASRock, you can see all of the B550 motherboards that might be coming out. But what is coming out is a new AI supercomputer from Microsoft. They've announced their open AI supercomputer with 285,000 CPU cores, 10,000 GPUs, and no explicit purpose that Microsoft mentioned. What are they using this AI for? No clue, but they're doing it in collaboration with Open AI. What they gonna be doing with that? Hmm? Hmm? What, what, what are they gonna do another Twitter bot? Cause that went phenomenally. That would be amazing if they built a supercomputer to make a non-racist Twitter bot finally. Like it has to be. Yes, <laughs> you need that in order to keep the horrendousness of the internet out of their Twitter bot. For those of you who have no idea what I'm referencing, Microsoft did try to do an AI Twitter bot way back and the internet tainted it very quickly. So fast. It got hectic real stupid fast. And what happens stupid fast are Tesla cars. That's true. They go from, well, Nvidia apparently doesn't want to be connected to them anymore because in case you don't remember, Tesla got rid of Nvidia for their processing in their full self-driving vehicles. But on top of that, Nvidia has apparently discontinued the Tesla brand name so that they can avoid confusion with the automotive manufacturer, which, okay, I guess that's why they never called it the Tesla A100, the thing that got released. I didn't recognize that. I think I was calling it the Tesla A100. That's my bad, but they also removed the name Tesla from other Tesla products that they had on their website. Even if it's still in the URL, it's not on the product page anymore. So they don't, shh, shh, Nvidia is not a car. What is a car though? Not a CPU cooler. ID Cooling has announced these pastel CPU coolers, which I find quite beautiful. I mean, it's they're, they're, they're gorgeous. They come in baby blue, lemon yellow, mint green, and piglet pink. Don't like the names, but I don't know how well these are gonna cool. They don't have pricing. I just, it's a, it's a unique color scheme. Kinda dig it. Let me know what you think of those things down below. What I think of Samsung's portable SSDs is they're phenomenal. We have several of the T5 drives around here, 500 megabytes per second transfer speed. Well, Samsung updated those to the T7 Touch a little while ago, but those had a biometric authenticator. And if you didn't want that, you had no other option besides buying, it's paying the extra money for the fingerprint reader. Well, now the T7 without the fingerprint reader is out and it can go up to a gigabyte per second read and write. Yeah, uh-huh and you can get in a 500, one terabyte or two terabyte capacity starting at $110 going up to $370. I like it, I enjoy it. Speaking of fast storage though, the next version of SD Express has been announced with it having transfer rates of 3,940 megabytes per second. Reese, an SD card that can do four gigabytes per second. It's using the NVMe protocol, it's stupid fast. Kerchu. And Epic Games is stupid fast to get on my win list because they've been doing things that no other game company, no other game launcher I'm seeing is doing. They are now sending out partial refunds for recent sales that are happening in the Epic Games mega sale. We talked about this in the stream yesterday too. Don't forget to check us out, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. Come join us for Hot News Live. You'll find out what a spag bag is. But apparently Epic Games is sending out emails to various customers who purchased a game right before the Epic Games mega sale, offering the partial refund for the difference between the purchase price that they paid and the sale price after the fact. So the email saying you recently placed orders from Epic Games Store, the price of the games you purchased were recently lowered, so we are issuing partial refunds for the difference. There's no official policy or program that we're aware of that Epic Games has for this, probably to like not foster abuse, but I mean, they're doing it. And that's really freaking cool. It's really freaking cool. Would they do this for GTA 5? I don't know. That's what you get for not waiting, fools. But we've all been waiting for The Last of Us Part 2. Some of you haven't been waiting the amount that you should have, and you watched the leaks, you read the leaks. Hmm, don't do that. Well, Sony announced The Last of Us Part 2 branded PS4 Pro headset as controller and external Seagate drive. I, I like it. I, it's it's a leaf. It's a beautiful leaf. As far as like special editions go, this one's very nicely done. Mm. You know what else is nicely done? Lawsuits by Nintendo. Oh, They've got the handle on that. Nintendo is taking legal action against two 
US-based website. They filed a lawsuit in an Ohio court against a site called Uber Chips, as well as a second one against anonymous defendants from different websites, all who are selling a product from, or at least according to this article, hacking group team executor. Basically, it's something that you solder onto your Nintendo Switch with and allows you to get pass like some protections on that. And they're basically, uh, this is a DMCA takedown of these websites because the DMCA, this is not a copyright claim, the DMCA does not allow for people to hack or modify core integral parts of something. And so the chip that you would solder onto that is actually against the DMCA, which would make PlayStation modding really illegal as well. So there's that. Uh, whether or not this pans out, We'll have to see. My guess is that uh, these websites probably don't have enough money to fight against Nintendo. Nintendo's like the strongest. Right? The strongest. They could, they could strongest. deadlift so much. And Sony might have the strongest vlogging camera game soon. They are teasing the ZV-1, which is basically going to be like their RX100 Mark VII has a key few upgrades that make it a better vlogging camera. Number one, has a 24 to 70, 1.8 to 2.8 lens, a large record button, which the RX has the tiniest one, a three capsule microphone, and a fully articulating display and a grip, which would make it very good at vlogging. It has Sony's really good autofocus, which the RX100 already has. It does seem like this could be good. They're gonna give us a full announcement on May 26th, so just hold your britches until then. But you don't have to hold your britches anymore to know that Jet.com is a failure. In case you don't remember, Jet.com was a website at one point selling things, I think. And then Walmart bought it for $3 billion and then suffered two billions of dollars of losses in between when they bought it and when they canceled it yesterday in their Q1 earnings call. They did say, however, that the acquisition of Jet.com helped to make Walmart.com better, but Jet.com sucked, so bye-bye Jet.com. And bye-bye Joe Rogan from every other podcast platform besides Spotify, because in probably what is going to go down as the largest exclusivity agreement in modern history, Joe Rogan's podcast, which sees about 200 million downloads a month, is exclusively gonna be on Spotify at the end of the year. This includes their YouTube feed. It's gonna be video and audio on Spotify. The Joe Rogan clips will stay on YouTube. Clips are gonna stay there, but video and audio podcasts exclusively going to Spotify. Spotify making some huge plays when it comes to podcasting stuff. They picked up Anchor, they've done a lot of development. They're just, they're really trying to make it into the podcasting game. I do think this is a bigger deal than Ninja and Shroud going to Mixer because Mixer is not an established entity in anything. They were just kind of a pathetic upstart by Microsoft that nobody really cared about. And the only news that made them worthwhile was their acquisition, where Spotify is a huge digital consumption company already. This is massive. I've, I've read estimates that this deal may be in the two to $300 million mark for a multi-year exclusivity agreement. That's just a rumor at this point, Joe Rogan not mentioning how much it's gonna be, doubt he actually would, but he made bank from this. You can guarantee that. So is this why Spotify was testing video podcasts recently? More than likely. I'm sure it's a feature that they were looking to offer. We did talk about in a previous episode of Hot News that Zane and Heath's uh, unplugged or unfiltered podcast got a video test. So this might that might be paving the way for JRE. I'm not gonna go to Spotify to watch video though. No, never. And I'm not gonna go to the PlayStation and play Gears of War, but back in 2011, we maybe could have because there is a full, I mean, it's not full, but there is a working build of Gears of War 3 on the PlayStation 3 from May 19th, 2011. Somebody just uploaded a video about that. It's not exactly perfect. Like the game gets a little bork sometimes. According to Epic Games, this was them testing the Unreal Engine on PlayStation. They were never gonna bring Gears of War 3 to the PS3, but it was, but it was so that Epic Games could actually test the Unreal Engine for making new games for the PlayStation 3, which obviously now there's a huge partnership because the Unreal Engine 5 just got debuted with PlayStation 5. So this this was the start. Thank you, Gears of War. You may rest now. And I'm gonna rest. I'm done with this episode. Reese, pamper my feet. Ah!